Amen. Well, y'all sound like y'all come to receive today. We're on part three of a four-part series called Supernatural. Uh, first week, we talked about spiritual warfare. And um, we also understood that there's more going on than what we see with our natural eye. There is a spiritual battle going on in the, in the atmosphere. Um, last week, we talked about the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and what the Holy Spirit's role in our life is. That was very eye-opening for so many, and for myself as well. Today, we're going to talk about Satan and his demons. <gasps> oh, you believe there's demons? Absolutely. Do I believe that there's a demon behind every rock? No. And the church said, I mean, if you fail to test, it's probably because you didn't study well enough, not because there's a demon behind a rock. Right? Next week, we're going to talk about God and, and the angels. But this week, we want to talk about, basically, who is Satan? The Bible talks about him all through the Bible. He is our spiritual enemy. And let's start with, where did he come from? In, um, Isaiah, uh, excuse me, in Mark, the uh, fifth chapter, verse 2, he says... When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit, somebody say evil spirit, came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he had often been chained hand and foot. But he tore the chains apart and broke it, broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. Well, ain't that, isn't that something that's ironic in this world today? People that are suffering and hurting, you see these, especially young people cutting themselves and, and trying to inflict pain. Listen, the devil's just trying to inflict pain on you. His job is to kill, steal, and destroy. He, he, he's after anything that is the heart of God. Anything that matters to God the most, that's what, and watch, you matter the most. I said, and you matter the most. I'm going to need y'all to help me today. And you matter the most to God. So he's after you. If he causes you to kill yourself, he will. Amen? And when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want me to Want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God. See, he recognized who Jesus was. Son of the Most High God. Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Somebody say he's strong. Satan, Satan is a very strong force in our lives. Amen? He is a very strong force in our life. And you know what's really heart-wrenching is to watch somebody that knows God and go through the torment of the enemy. Today we're going to stop some of those. And the church said, Amen. where did Satan come from? In Isaiah, the 14th chapter, he's, he says this. Matter of fact, Satan was described as the morning star. He was the archangel of music. Amen? And five different times, five times he said, I will. When you get your will in front of God's will, when Jesus belt, knelt down at the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible declares, he says, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen? In Isaiah, the 14th chapter, he says this, he just tells us where Satan come from. How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn, you have been cast down to the earth. You who once laid low the nations, you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. 
I will make myself like the most high. Can I tell you something? God said, no, you won't. Oh, oh, no, you won't. Oh, oh, no, you won't. God said, oh, oh, you might do a lot of things, but no, you won't. I will not share my glory with no one. Amen? And then there was a war in heaven in Revelations. He tells us this. And there was a war in heaven. Somebody say a war. war. <laughs> we, we found out a while ago that Satan's powerful, has strength. I mean, was causing the, the man with the evil spirits to be able to break free of his bondages and his chains and couldn't contain him. But then there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough. Somebody say, he ain't strong enough. He ain't strong enough against the name of Jesus. He's not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ascent serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled into the earth, and his angels with him. The Bible says that because he, he wanted to put himself above God, God kicked him out of heaven and he took one-third of the angels with him and, and that is his demons that are at work today in our lives. Amen? That, that is that, that, so we, we got to understand, not what we see right here in our little world is all that is going on. There's a plot and a place, that, a, a strategy going on everywhere you look. Amen? There's a war going on. Somebody said there's a war going on. There's a war of good and there's a war of evil after you. But it's our choice. God, didn't, God gave us free will. Maybe that might ought to be the first question we ask when we get to heaven. Why did you do that? I don't know about you. You knew I was going to mess it up, God. You knew me before I was uh, created and formed in my mother's womb. You knew I was going to blow it, so why in the world? Would you give me that free reign? So let's talk about what does demons do. Woo. Mm. Let, let me go here first. This this morning, I th I'll be honest with you, I thought there was a demon in my house. <laughs> I, I, I woke up this morning. I don't know about y'all that know me. I got to have my coffee. Whew. That's your gas. That's your fuel. You got to have that to get started. I go and I make a pot of coffee. I pour it in there and I go about my business. I come back in a few minutes because I got a bun coffee maker. I got because I, I like coffee. I drink way, way too much coffee. Okay, and and I come back and and what? There's coffee running down my counter, down the front of my cabinets, out into the floor. Say I ain't got a wife to help me clean this up. I got to do this myself on on a, at five o'clock on a Sunday morning. And I'm like, oh my God! So I get my coffee cup and I. Salvage me a cup. Hallelujah. Yes. And then I looked at the coffee pot and it was broke all the way down the front. And I said, oh, Lord, I poured it all out. I said, man, there's probably glass in there. This is just what the devil wants. Not today, devil. And, of course, I'm in the process of moving, so I don't have an extra coffee pot. I don't know about you, but you don't want to be around me when I don't have my coffee in the morning. Amen. And... and but actually, I'm sure I hit that coffee pot with something and cracked it. So it wasn't the devil trying to do that. Maybe it was, maybe, just maybe, it might have been God's way of saying, hey, you need to slow down on your coffee. And the church said, anyway, what, what do demons do? Demons influence the leaders of nations. Daniel prayed for 21 days. For 21 days, he prayed and sought God. And when finally, when the angel of the Lord showed up in Daniel 10, he says this, But the prince of Persian kingdom, Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I, because I was detained there with the king of Persia. I mean, look around at the, at the different nations that are, that are in turmoil, man, that'll, that'll put you to death when you declare Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen? We live in a time now that, that rulers are, are being led by demonic force. 
and they do. They influence our leaders. What does demons do? They desire to inflict suffering on you. They desire. Mm. In Matthew, the 17th chapter, verse 15, says this, Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. Jesus said, bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed. Somebody say he was healed from that moment on. If he'd do this to a child, what would he do to you? If he would do this to a child, what would he do to you? His job is to inflict as much pain and turmoil and agony on you as possible. Can I tell you something? The devil hates you. The Bible declares this. Satan hates you. His job is to kill, steal, and destroy. When Jesus told every one of us that I have come to give you life, and life more abundantly. You know, uh, 25 years clean, I can say this now boldly. How do you stay clean? It's this simple. It's every day declaring Jesus is Lord and not today, devil. Amen. Not, no, not today, devil. Every situation, not today, devil. You had your chance. You had me, you had me bound up in your mess, but not today. I've been set free. Amen? Amen. Whoo. Demons scheme to lure you away from God. 1 Timothy 4 and 1, the Spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith. Ain't that what we're seeing in America today? Abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Hmm. I mean, we have doctrine that's taught today that, that's not even biblical. And mass of people are following it because it justifies how they feel and it justifies their lifestyle. If it was sin 2,000 years ago, it's sin today. You can water anything you want to water down, but don't water down the gospel. The gospel, he said, I will not change. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am the Alpha, the Omega, and the beginning and the end. I started this and I'll finish it. And it's going to be the same. That didn't change. Y'all with me? Mm. But his job is to lure believers away from the things of God. I'm going to give you an example, and I want everybody in here to be honest with me. I'm going to be as transparent and as honest as I can be. Um, how many times you got up on a Sunday morning, had a long week, and you have said within yourself, Self, this is the only day off I got. Why in the world do I want to get out of this comfortable bed? I can have church at home. Let's be honest today. Come on. Why? When, when is the biggest fights in your house? When is it that your children won't get ready? When is it when that woman won't get her hair did fast enough? When, <clears throat> come on. When is it? When is that? When is your coffee pot going to break? Amen? Hey. See, some of us, we, we, we're laughing about that, but I'm going to be honest with you. That is the ploy of the enemy. Let me see if I can kill, steal, or destroy today. All I got to do is get you preoccupied in something else. And if I can just take the word of God from you, he'll lure you in so many ways. He'll cause you to be offended with the leadership of anything that's going on. We live in a time today where there is no influence in at all. From school to the house to the White House, there is none. And we're wondering why there's no authority anymore. Woo, 
God works off authority. I hate to disappoint everybody, but he does. And, and what will happen is, is the enemy will, will cause you to get offended. You come to church and, oh, well, Christy didn't greet me right when she, she greeted everybody else. She didn't greet me. And then I've been talking to Julie for 15 weeks to sing my song, and she ain't sang my song yet. Pastor walked right by me, and he didn't even speak to me. I carried my babies in there to the nursery. I picked them up, and the diaper wouldn't change. No, they just used it on the way out. Y'all need to help me today. Boy, the pastor got a little too loud today. Music was too loud. I wish they'd turn them lights on in here. If I can distract you some way, then I can take what the devil meant for destruction. And he said, I can turn it around for my glory if you will give me your life. The devil wants to just pull it. A little at a time. Let me get you distracted. Well, if I can't get you mad at leadership, what I can do is get you distracted of the things of the world. Oh, my job's calling on me. I, I've seen this so many times in 20 plus years of ministry. Is Oh, Lord, help me, Pastor. Help me pray for a job. I need a job. I need a job. Oh, Lord, I've been, ooh, I've been wanting this job right here. Then you pray and they get it and they say, you know, you don't see them no more. Then when you see them in town, they're broke, busted, and disgusted. Why? Because the enemy was just luring them away and here, here's, the, here's the best one <laughs> y'all ready <laughs> y'all get this one I went to church today but I didn't feel it heck I don't even know if I like that preacher no more I don't know what they talking about they feel the presence of God and I didn't feel nothing mm. Whew. Lord, now you didn't feel nothing because this is what the devil had you doing. Why she got to do that? I mean, really? All he's got to do is distract you. See, that's why I never sit in the back of a church. You will never cause me to be on the back row for nothing. I have A, B, A, D, 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 H, and H, and D, and D, and H. I will get distracted. It'll be squirrels everywhere. I mean, I'll see squirrels running up the wall and, and everything. And I get distracted in the front. Y'all with me? When I've learned one thing. Close your eyes sometimes. You may even have to just, you know what? I ain't got to look at nothing right now. Woo, God, I need you. Right here. I don't care about, I don't care about Sister Short Drawers over there. I need you right now. I don't care about Mama Gossiper over here. I need you right now. I don't care how many people are running in and out. I need you right now. Woo, I need you, Lord. I told you I feel a preach coming on today. Hallelujah. Ephesians 3.20 says this, Unto him that is able to do exceedingly, come on church, abundantly, above all, I can ask or think, according to the power that I let work in me. Amen? So watch this. That means I got power that works in me. You right? Watch this. So now when I wake up on Sunday morning, oh, Lord, this is the only day I got off, and I want to get, I just want to rest. And then we should be going, wait a minute, hold on a minute. Not today, devil. Uh-uh, there's something at the house of God for me today. I need to go get what it is. You trying to hinder somebody. It ain't me. No, 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 no. And then when I get there, I ain't letting short, Sister Short George mess me up today. Uh-uh, I'm coming to get mine. Then you get out there in a flat tire on your car. Oh, no. Thank you, Jesus. I got another car to get in. If not, I'll call my neighbor. I'll call somebody at church. I done joined up with a lady, so I know one of the ladies will come pick me up. I done joined the men's ministry. Somebody will come get me because I know there's something that's trying to attack me and rob, kill, and steal. Not today, devil. Not today. Somebody say, not today. Not today. You should have had me. Whoo. Next thing is, the demons want to paralyze you with fear. 
Somebody say fear. He wants you to worry about your kids. Just riddle you in fear of your children. He wants to just bombard you with worry of your future. And I need you to say this from your heart. Look at your neighbor and say, my future's in his hands. Mm. Then, he'll, then he'll worry, make, just throw all kind of worry about finances. You know what number one cause of divorce is in America? Finances. Man, we all good as long as we got plenty of money. But we're going to find out how strong you all get broke. Have to eat spam sandwiches. Can't even be sandwiches. They sandwiches. Come on, y'all. Man, he'll, then he'll have you cause you to worry about your job. Everybody's getting laid off. Then he'll mess around and, and he'll cause you to worry about your marriage. Mm. 2 Timothy 1 and 6, 7, he says this here. For God has not given us, us, the believers, us, the believers. Look at your neighbor say, the believers. He's talking to the believers now. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. I know who I am in Christ. If he be for me, what can be against me? Mm. Woo. Amen. We have to also understand in battling our enemy, in battling the darkness out of our life. Hallelujah. Number one, we got to learn not to treat our enemy lightly. I said, don't treat your enemy lightly. That's vital. In Jude, the ninth chapter, verse 10, he says this, but even, but even the archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare to bring a slanderous accusation against him, but said, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Not, not me. I didn't rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Y'all with me? Let's don't go. And, and, and to be honest with you, I think sometimes we get, uh, anything we keep putting all of our emphasis on, we could become those people that there's a demon behind every rock. That everything is because, no, some things just call life, baby. And, and there's just stuff that happens in life. And, 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 and sometimes it's because of bad decisions that we make. And not, just, not just everything on the enemy. But understanding that we don't go taunt our enemy. Hallelujah. Let me say amen. amen. Number two, if you're taking notes, we don't flirt with darkness. Oh, Deuteronomy 18, chapter, verse 10 says this. Let no one be found among you who practices deviation or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells. Or who is a medium or a spiritist or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. See, back in my day when I was growing up as a teenager, we, we played a lot of games that we won't talk about here today. And um, it's not the church setting. But remember the Ouija board? So, some of y'all going, started to shake your head, and then all of a sudden you went, amen? And I, I remember sitting around thinking that was cool. In other words, we don't entertain the darkness of this world that we entertain knowingly. Amen? There's already enough. I mean, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's, it's bad enough 
that Hollywood has already infested our culture. You know, some Christians say, well, I won't drink, I won't smoke, I won't do drugs, I wouldn't participate in, 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 in pornography, or I would not participate in, in any of this stuff, but yet we'll pay good hard-earned money to go and let Hollywood do it for us. And if we're not careful, we get infested by the darkness of this world. Amen? Number three, we talked about this in week one. We don't fight with our power, but with God's authority. Somebody say, with God's authority. See, we do not fight from a position. We do not fight for, in a position for victory. We're fighting from the position of victory. Because the victory has already been won. Somebody say, it's already been won. How many in here believe that Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave? How many believe that he died on the cross so that we can make heaven our home? That he shed his blood in seven places so that we can have freedom and liberty and, and be free from some things, sickness, disease? Y'all with me? How, how many in here believe that when he knelt down at the Garden of Gethsemane and shed great drops of blood, he said, not my will, but thy will be done. The first Adam sold our willpower out. Jesus bought it back. Amen. Amen. We believe that, right? We also believe that, that Jesus, for three days, the Bible says that he went to the lower parts of this earth. He went to hell and kicked the door into to hell and kicked down the door, took the keys to death, hell, and the grave, and he come back and he handed them off to us. <coughs> he said, nevertheless, I got to go. But I'm going to send one to live in you. Hmm. We learned that in week two. The Holy Spirit that lives in us leads us, guides us, counsels us, counsels us. Amen? Somebody say, we don't fight with our power. Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse 1, Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits to heal every disease and sickness. You notice... It does not say here that he gave them his power. That, I think this, sometimes we get, he didn't give them his power. He gave them his authority. Amen? He gave them the authority. In James, the fourth chapter, verse 7 says, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, in other words, now you got a part to play here. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Amen? Now I'm going to spend a minute here. Because this is important that we get this and we learn this, that, that this is a vital part. See, we, I've been around people that every time you turn around, they're rebuking somebody. You know, he says, rebuke the devil. Somebody say it. He, he did say that, rebuke the devil. Too often, we want to rebuke people when we're not fighting a fleshly battle. We're fighting a spiritual battle. And in that spiritual battle, we have to understand our authority. I remember as a young boy, uh, I had a friend of mine that went and Enlisted in the military, he wanted to be a marine his whole life, and he's not a big, he wasn't a big guy, he's a little skinny runt, and uh, you know, had long hair, and you know, kind of, like late seventies, y'all, y'all get it here in a minute, and you know, and and he goes in, he's, to be honest with you, wasn't very big in stature, let's just say that, he goes into the, they he gets enlisted. And he was, peace out, baby, I'm out of here, I'm going. I could, all he wanted to do was get out of mom and daddy's house. Anybody ever been there? I right, look here. So, and some of these young people already, yeah, right now, I want to get out right now. Then when you get 50, I wish I could go back. 
Oh, Lord, I wish I, if I knew what I knew now, I'd have never left. Woo, mama cooked so good, she cleaned the house. I didn't have, anyway, I didn't have no worries. Woo, especially when all those bills come due. But he went off to the military, he enlisted, and, and, and I was kind of envious because I went and tried to sign up, and I couldn't get in. They, I had some medical things that they wouldn't let me in the Air Force. I wanted to go in the Air Force to be a uh, diesel engineer. And he goes in, and he's going to be him a, He's simplifying, but he's finna go be a Marine. They sent him off to Paris Island. Back in the late 70s. Back back when they had real military. You know, he had a little problem with authority. And I'm thinking, mm-hmm, this is going to be real good. Yeah. You face it go through six weeks of hell. And it was. I'll never forget the day I f- saw him come home. Had that uniform on. He was walking with his head held high. I said, boy, let you choose something. Don't put on a little weight. I said, well, tell me how was it? It bends. I'm not going to get to go. He said, it was hell. He said, for six weeks. They screamed and hollered, got in your face, forced me to do things that I didn't want to do. He said, but now, I'm a United States Marine. He said, there was days I wanted to quit, give up and throw in the towel. There was days I just wanted to be honest with you, I just wanted to go crazy on some of them. I don't know, yeah, I wanted to see that one, brother. I, I'd buy tickets to that. <laughs> he said it was just tough. But now, I have authority. He made a career of that. Served in many wars. I remember the last time I saw him was about 15 years ago. And he's way up in rank now and kind of blew my mind because I'll be honest with you. I had him counted out before he ever got started. Now he leads commands and, and does things. And, and he said, you know, I almost gave up. But that something inside me kept pushing me to keep pushing forward. He said, there's several times through my career I almost gave in, gave in, caved in. He said, but you know what? I'm that close to retiring now. I did my time. And one day I'm going to reap a great harvest from it. I believe that's for every one of us in here. We realize who our authority is that we have. We won't give up. We keep pushing through even when it hurts. And sometimes we have to give up the sacrifices. But if we'll keep on, one day we'll retire from here. And we'll hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. (laughs) See, we we, we don't fight from our own power. Our own might, that little runt of a man became mighty and became an awesome leader because he didn't give up. And that's what the enemy would love for everyone in this place to do is give up. If we could, he could just get us to give up and surrender, whether it be to offense, to, whether it be to whatever, things of the world or distractions, Can I tell you something? He's defeated you. Somebody say we fight with God's authority. If I went to Slappy Boulevard right now, stood out in Slappy and put my hands out to stop the traffic, most of the people, if I wasn't careful, they'd probably run over me. Amen? Mm. But now let me put a police uniform on. Stand out there and put my hand up, they're going to stop. Why? Because immediately you already know that that he has authority. Not that he's any different than anybody else. He's still a human being or she, whatever it may be. They have the authority to stop you. Can I tell you something? You have the authority to stop the wiles of the devil in your life. 
You have that authority. And it's called the name of Jesus. Just like here, he called his disciples together. He didn't give them his power. He gave them the authority to use his power. Y'all with me? Because, man, I'm going to tell you something. I don't know about you, but my, I, I know what I can do. I made a mess of things for many years of my life. And, and, and I know how to do that well. I have mastered that. But watch this. I've learned something. I have the power of God to resist the enemy in my life. No, 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 I want y'all to understand this. I have the power. You have the power to resist the enemy in your life. You either give place to him or you bind him and rebuke him. Amen. We're waiting on God. No, God's waiting on you. No, well, well God's got to come through on it. No, no, God's waiting on you, baby. See, he's not wanting you to go and rebuke your spouse. He's not wanting you to go rebuke your neighbor. What he's wanting to do is he wants you to stand up and on the inside of you to say this right here. Not today, devil. Not today. Not today. You ain't got to sit there out and walk around and, and, and look foolish. Y'all with me? <gasps> no. Inside. Not today, devil. You're not getting my joy today. You're not getting my peace today. Oh, I'm tired, but I'm going to the house of God. I, uh, I may be distracted in some things, but no, not today, devil. Uh-uh. No, you got my coffee early this morning. I made it to the house of God and got me a cup of coffee. Not today, devil. You couldn't. You can get my. You can take that that woman you gave me and cause her to cause me to stumble, but not today, devil. Not today. Now I'm not gonna worry about my finances. Not today. Mm. -mm. Not worried about my kids. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over them, and they belong to you, Lord. I'm just, I'm just keeping them for a little while, and there's going to come a day that you're going to want them back. Not today, devil. Not today. That is our defense. He says, put on the whole armor of God. And in these end days, when you see these days coming, these perilous times where mamas against daughters, fathers against sons, households riddled and torn apart. He says, forsake not the assembling of yourself. Why? Because we need the power of God as a unity to come in and gird up the wiles of these, this world that we live in. Amen? I'm, that's the truth. Not today, devil. Uh, ever since Kara started singing that song, it's that, kind of been stuck in my mind and and, it, and it's helped me out quite a bit because there's times, that, to be honest with you, I, I like to give him place every once in a while in my mind because the battle's right here, y'all. Battle's right here. You know, when you're by yourself riding down the road, the battle's right here. When, when somebody looks, they're over there talking and, and you happen to look at them and they're looking at you and then they quit talking, then immediately your mind goes, wonder what they were saying about me. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Not, not today, devil. You know what they're probably saying? You are an anointed child of the Most High God. And the church said, Amen. Amen. So demons' job is to influence us, to deter us from the things that God has provided for us through the sacrifice of His Son. That's what their job is. It's to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's so subtle. Watch this. The devil cannot read your mind. Let me, let, me, let me clarify that. I know he can't read your mind because he doesn't live in you. Because if you're saved, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And God didn't put a duplex in your heart. Because some, some people, well, they say, but they, I believe they demon possess you. It can't, it can't be both. I'm going to say that. He can't read your mind. What he can is he can read everything that comes out your mouth. So when it comes to your mind, you have the ability to take that thought captive right there by saying, not today, devil. You're not going to worry about that today, devil. Not today. You're not going to steal my peace. You're not going to steal my joy. Not today. You're not stealing my finances no more. No, you're not stealing my marriage. Uh, not today. Not, not today, devil. 
But if we're not careful, his greatest ploy of all, he will cause us to kind of push back where we once were pushing in. And I want to ask you to be honest today. Is that anybody here today besides me? That the enemy just kind of wears on you. He wears on you. Wears on you. Good. I mean, it's good. Hold your hand up. Just hold it up. It's okay. That's his ploy. We've recognized him. Our job now is to do this here. Apply the power of God. Pastor, pray for me. Uh-uh. We're going to pray together. we all going to pray together. We're going to take the authority that Jesus died for, that Jesus left for us to use against the enemy. We're going to reach down in our arsenal, and we're going to fight this fight. We're going to fight it fair. He fights unfair. We're going to fight it fair. We're going to use the authority of the name of Jesus. And this is how powerful the name of Jesus is. If you'll notice on anything that we do in America today, it's okay to say God. It's not okay when you say Jesus. Why? Because there's power in that name. There's many gods, but there's only one Savior. Oh, there, there's many gods, but there's only one Deliverer. There's many gods, but there's only one that can save you and deliver you. I hate to tell Miss Oprah Winfrey she's wrong. There's not many roads to heaven. There's only one, and it's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way. When people quit teaching that, you need to run. I'm like Paul. Follow me as long as I follow Christ. And my Bible declares the only way to the Father is through the Son. Amen. So if you will this morning, stand up, every head bowed, every eye closed. No one moving around. If right now, in this moment, we're going to tear down some strongholds of the enemy. Not today, devil. I've been distracted too long, devil. My mind's been all over the place. Not today. My worship has been hindered. Not today. This is it. When each and every person with me give voice to this prayer this morning with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the things that you have done I thank you that your very best, Jesus, died and ascended to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit to live in us. I thank you for the authority to use Jesus' name. Now, in the name of Jesus, I bind the darkness of this world off my mind Satan you have no right and no authority I'm tired of you having your way now I'm ready for God to have his way Satan not today in Jesus name if you receive that give the Lord a hand clap of praise